Hey Floss Tube, welcome back to my channel. My name is Jordan. I call myself the Tattooed Stitcher. This is a channel about cross stitch and all things cross stitch for the most part. Um, look how professional that intro was. Okay, this is Floss Tube number nine, I think. Uh, we're just, it's November 1st, we're just gonna go. I hope everyone had an awesome October. Halloween was yesterday, so I'm feeling a little tired from staying up late, trick-or-treating with the children's. Um, I hope you did all the Halloween stitching and finishing and decorating and overall had a great October. We had a wonderful October. The weather has been so good. Beautiful fall, the colors changing. I've been trying to walk outside every day just to absorb the fallness, which is so great. We don't normally get very good falls here. It goes from like super, super hot to snow. We, with maybe like a week or two of fall in between, but we've had like a good two months of beautiful fall, slow changing colors. Oh, it's been amazing. I've really been enjoying it. So I hope you have too, wherever you are. If your fall is like warm, like I think Australia, it's warm. I just can't wrap my head around it. I know it's like, it just, I don't know. But I mean, cool, cool for you. Um, but yeah, so I'll do live stuff at the end like usual. But I did have a few really awesome shout outs this past, between my last video and this video. And I'd like to just like do some specific thank yous and everything. And if I missed a channel that you saw that shouted me out and I didn't see because as much as I'd love to watch Flosstube 24 hours a day, I just can't. Please put it in the comments so I can go check that channel out. Um, <clears throat> I get in this like rut of watching the same people over and over, my favorites, and I like discovering new people. So first person that I saw shouted me out was Amber. Her channel is Rogue Mama Stitcher. She, I mean, if you haven't watched Amber, you really have to go check her out. Her channel is so fun. She does a lot of sew to stitch and stockings and like super colorful, fun projects. She just had an amazing Halloween-esque finish. I believe it was a modern folk embroidery. Anyways, it's so cool. She's very, uh, it's giving Morticia and I love it. Her voice is very soothing and I like to listen to her and she's very sweet. So go check out her channel. Um, also, Chelsea and Chris from Ale and Ada, they took a hiatus for over a year, but they are back with a new video and new drinks. And I really enjoy watching those two together. I just like, like pairs on YouTube or Flosstube are just fun to watch. So, but yeah, they, they do kind of an array of stitching and both of them stitch and I just love it. And they have in the background of their new like setting, uh, the Lonely Mountain, smog flying over it, and I love it. Um, another channel was Mary, the Daydream Stitcher. I'm relatively new to Mary's channel. She's been around for quite a while. So, I mean, if you're like, duh, uh, she's been here forever, sorry. I found her like probably five months ago when Amber showed it, shout, shouted her out. And so I went and checked out her channel and she is wonderful. She does a really huge array of stitching. She does full coverage, Dimensions kits, Mirabilia's, Joan Elliott's, Long Duck Samplers, all of them. She's really wonderful. Go check her channel out for sure. Um, and then I got a shout out during the live stream from Kefren at Snug Harbor Crafts during Stitch West. And I know I got a few specific people coming over because of that. So thanks, Kef. And yeah, those are the ones that I can recall. If you know somebody else, please put it in the comments. Um, so Stitch West, it was so much fun. I had a wonderful time seeing all my old stitching friends and making new stitching friends and buying all the things. And it was just so great. I rode down with my friend Amy and we stayed at a different hotel than they were hosting it at, um, just because it was cheaper. Um, but it wasn't bad at all. We walked like half a block to get to our hotel at the end of the night. 
I stayed up really late stitching all the nights and it was just so much fun. Uh, I thought it's just like my head, but there's just something magical about being in a room of 200 people that all geek out over the same thing that you love and you can just enjoy talking about it with everybody and it's just great. It's great. If you can go to a retreat, go to a retreat. They just are so much fun. You'll love it. You won't regret it. <clears throat> but yeah, we did some shopping in Stitch West, ate some good food and stitched all the things. Obviously I had a new start in Stitch West I'll show with my whips. And uh, if you can hear thumping, my baby's room is directly above us. And when we moved, I lost one of the bolts to like the crib bars. So she like stands up and jumps in the bed and it bangs. Like, <laughs> I need to do something about it, but I keep forgetting. <sighs> Anyways, let's just move on, shall we? <sighs> Should we do whips? Let's do whips. I didn't stitch on a ton of different things this past month, but I got uh, some good progress on a couple different things. I had two new starts because I always have new starts. So we will start with my first whip, which was a new start actually. First of all, look at this bag. It's fantastic. Fantastic. Um, okay, so I started and I don't have a picture of it. I just realized maybe I could pull it up on my thing really quick. It's a Doreen Jones. Oh, I do have a picture. It's called Halloween Cat. Um, and I just got it on her Etsy and I am stitching this little ornament on it. Super cute. I like Doreen Jones's Halloween stuff. They're just like cutesy and I mean, I just like it. So I started it on just a 32 count. What is that? Well, that's black. 32 count taupe Lugana. And I didn't get it super far, but this is where I got on it. I've color finished actually the, the grays in the cat. That's all the grays in there. But yeah, it's really cute. I started that one. And then I worked on, what is this? And then I worked on one of my soda stitches, which was the Peter Pan. I don't have a picture of it. It's a, it's on here too. What's it called? It's just called Peter Pan. Oh, I do have a picture of it. This one. And I worked on that little crocodile and the little moon in the corner. And that's where I got. Look at how cute. I love stitching that little crocodile. This is what I love about soda stitch. Like, it's like these aren't back stitch, you see? They're like a blobs. But like, it would just be a blob. But then look at the back stitch. Think of a cute little alligator. Crocodile? Tick tock croc. That's what my kids call it. Probably a crocodile. So I stitch on that one. <clears throat> I'm getting over a sickness, surprise, surprise. I swear I'm always sick in October, right before Stitch West. So if my voice is a little. <sighs> and then, so at Stitch West, the first day, which was Friday, I worked on the Dark Queen of the Earth. Oh my gosh, it's October 1st. That means the park gets released today. Guys, I'm behind. I'm trying to catch up, but it's a lot. <laughs> It's a lot of stitching, but I did make some really good progress. I finished part one and I got like, I'm probably 20% done with part two. 
So I stitched this the whole first day of Stitch West. I told myself I had to stitch it before I could start my new start. Let's see if we can get a, a good YouTube shot. <laughs> I never have a good ones, guys. I never have good thumbnails. Um, so far, part one was like this whole chunk here and part two has been like what's going in here. And the colors are turning out really pretty. They're just, I mean, like, look at that. That's gotta be like at least a billion, right? Fuffelian? I don't, it feels like that. Maybe. So I'm getting closer to caught up on Dark Queen. We'll see. I'm really hoping that this part that releases today has some like skin. I think she's gonna have dark skin based on the colors that were called for because so far the typical skin colors like that you see in Mirabilia have been used in the skirt and not her body, but there are tons of these like taupey browns. So I'm really hoping she has dark skin. That would be really fun. So we'll see. I told my friend that if the next part that's released, which is today obviously, if it's, if it's another humongous, just like blob of something, I just might die. That's not dramatic at all. So <clears throat> my second new start was at Stitch West the second day, Saturday, and I started with my mother-in-law, Lorinda. Um, we started, first of all, a very lovely stitching friend. I don't know if she wants to be mentioned on here. You know who you are. Bought me this lovely folio that Rika made from House of Stitch and Stash. She brought a whole bunch of these to Stitch West to sell. And like, just, it's, I, chair squeaking, sorry. It's so cute. It's Halloween and it's like a folio and it's like, bah, look at it. This is a magnet in here. I chose, she had multiple options that had all the different little scene here. I chose the cat, because duh, good stuff. But like, they're like pockets and pockets and pockets and zippers and it's just amazing. It, the quality is so good, so good. Um, so we started from Teresa Colgate's new Halloween book. We started this one on the cover, the Halloween sampler, because look at it. I've never stitched a Teresa Colgate before because the denseness of her patterns really intimidate me. I don't like stitching such such heavy things. I get burnt out and bored and I, it doesn't appeal, but like there was so much going on in this that I had to, like there's a freaking bird standing on that mini witch's head. Like look at the row of dancing cat fellows. Ugh. I, they're so cute. It's so cute. Look at the cats in the trees. Ugh. I love it. I love everything about it. I love it. And also my mother-in-law Lorinda um, bought me this book so I could stitch it, but she really bought it because she forgot her own book. But thanks anyways. <laughs> so, I'm not gonna show you the pattern. What am I doing? So I don't usually use the called for thread in patterns like that because I have a large stash of fancy floss and I don't stitch patterns that have fancy floss that often. So I always convert to what I have because I have a ton. And so none of these are the called for that I pulled, none of them. They're all from my stash. They're a collection of Victorian motto, classic color works, general art, weeks. Um, what is this? What is this? This is from a mysticaldiamondart.com. Mystical diamond art. It came in a uh, Black Needle Society box. So my own call, my own colors, they're turning out great. I'm really happy with the ones I've chosen. <clears throat> I'm stitching it on 40 count, uh, I had the tag and, oh, it's right here. 40 count Dead Sea Scroll by Seraphim hand dye fabrics. And the fabric is just, let's see if we can get it good. Oh, okay. Oh, yes. Look at the fabric. 
it's so crusty and dirty and dingy and I love it. So I started in the middle because this pattern is really big and I didn't want to risk not having enough space. So I started in the middle, which was about right here at the word Halloween. Halloween is the middle. So I started in the middle and then moved upwards. So this is the middle of the words and I did a couple of stars and there's like bands that go across here and then I got to these little cats. <laughs> I love them so much. I cannot wait to have the row of cats done. So this is, I stitched on this all day Saturday and all the time that I stitched Sunday at Stitch West and then I stitched on it yesterday because it's Halloween and now Halloween's over and I'm a seasonal stitcher so this is going bye bye until I feel the desire to stitch Halloween. But yeah, <clears throat> so we started those together and that was really fun. So there's that one, another new start. And then my last whip that I worked on, I don't know what it was. I just got a bug for Mirabilia and went ham on it. And that is Eliana, Princess Eliana. I'm stitching her on 32 count iced grapes by Under the Sea fabrics and with the call for everything. And I got so much done on her. So just for like reference, I don't have, I wish I had like old pictures. Like here it was before, sorry. So about right here is where the pattern cuts in half, or right there. And that's where I was done, where I had ended her last time. I was like, there was a perfect line was exactly half and now she looks like this you can not see so between those two like green pieces on the very top of her right down the middle of there is where I was so I got this whole chunk basically from about here right there here, I had this little bulb, like from here over. I did all of that. And this is the end of the ribbon. This is like right here. So, I mean, I'm pretty close. If I was, uh, I don't know, a rule follower, I'd be like, I could finish this by the end of the year. But something in my brain, something happens when I put a rule on it that I'm like immediately rebelling. Nope. Nope. I said I'm doing that. Well, guess what? I'm not. So not putting any rules on this. I'm putting it away for a little bit because I got a little bit burnt out. I stitched on it like a solid week, like a lot. I'm a little burnt out. So I'm going to put it away for a bit. And I don't know what I'm going to stitch on next. I'm kind of deciding. So those were my whips. And kind of small little whip parade, but that's okay. So I have notes. I'm organized this time. So let's see. I had a couple questions. I'm just remembering now looking at my notes so much for my notes. I had a couple questions on my last two videos that I thought I'd address. I've answered there, but I thought I'd just address here. I was asked a few times uh, what app I'm using on my iPad to stitch from and highlight and that's the good reader app it is a paid for app I pay I think $17 a year but I love it I love being able to highlight I love stitching from it it's well worth it to me to pay that <clears throat> and then I got a question on my I should have pulled the whip but I didn't my Spirit of Christmas by Lavender and Lace. It's my Santa whip. Um, I got a question about the floss on it and it is not fancy floss, it is DMC. The colors are just super rich and I don't know if it's that's the blue fabric that I chose. Maybe I should just grab it. I don't know which, I don't know which bag it's in. And you guys, there's like a thousand bags over there, projects. Um, but yeah, I'm just using called for DMC. And this commenter, I wish I wrote down your name, had a brilliant idea of, because I'm stuck on it, on the white. The white is like four different colors of white. 
in this beard and the, the coat. And I'm like, no, no, it's terrible to stitch. So they had the brilliant idea of switching it to like a variegated fancy floss white. And I'm like, done doing it. I, I feel like an idiot for not considering it, but maybe we'll pull that out since it's now almost Christmas. I know it's November 1st. It's almost Christmas, whatever. So might be that. Um, so that was, oh, this is Stitch West Hall. Um, so I actually, I forgot to like announce because brain doesn't work very good. Um, I am going to Queen City, the Queen City Stitch Retreat next year in Charlotte, being put on by Maggie, um, Kitchy Whips, and Amy Fiber. What's her channel called? Fiber Arts Amy. Um, they're putting it on, and I guess like Nora Corbett's gonna be there. Pretty cool. I'm going. I'm meeting Rocio there from House of Stitch. And, no, Rocio from Cocohama Stitchery. Which where the heck have you been, girl? I'm meeting her there, we're sharing a room. Um, I know a few floss tubers out there are going. Amber, Rogue Mama Stitch is going. Burn, Bernadette from Burn Stitches is going. Um, and then I met a few people at Stitch West that are going. It's gonna be so much fun. If you're going, comment and let me know. I'm really excited for that one. I've never flown that far and I've never flown alone. So a little nervous, but it'll be worth it. It'll be so much fun. Okay, so let's get into my haul. A new start I'm possibly considering. And yeah, let's do that. Okay, so new start I'm considering, which kind of ties into haul. But first of all, look at this bag. Stop. It's Teresa Come Good Fabric. Like, oh, so good. So Everybody and their dog who is cool is starting the sewing cats. Debbie from Mama Bear Stitchery and uh, Amanda from uh, Lucky Chance Stitcher. They are both starting this for Soda Stitch Saturday, which is hosted by Bernadette, Burn Stitches. You stitch on a soda stitch every Saturday. I don't know if I'm going to be able to abide by those rules, but everyone's starting this and now I want to start it so I might start it how many soda stitch um whips does someone need a million okay so I'm thinking I'm gonna stitch it on this fabric that I got from or during stitch west um Leslie from under the sea fabrics had a table full of fabric and it went a little crazy and I got three pieces and this was one of the pieces it's called Freya it is a 32 count linen and it looks like this. <laughs> look at it, look at it. Would you just look at it? It's amazing, it is amazing. I love it so much, I love it so much. And because I did Sweet Bears and I know I had a bunch of fabric showing on the side of Sweet Bears, I knew I wanted fabric to show for this too. So I wanted it to be kind of like a wacky, cool, interesting, whimsical fabric. And what do you think? We think yes? I think yes. Ooh, I really want to turn on. That might be started today. We'll see. I've already got all the everything pulled, ready to go. So that is a possible new start because I want to be cool like Debbie and Amanda, okay? And then another new start is going to be a stitch along I'm doing with Amber, Rogue Mama Stitcher. We are going to stitch, so to stitch, are you surprised? Um, called the it's a pop-up, one of the pop-up stores and this one is the candy shop. Look how cute. Look at the candies. Look at the little dress. Everyone needs a solo stitch. They're just joy. They're just, I love them. So we are going to stitch that together. We're starting it this month, but I'm not exactly sure what day. Amber, we need to figure that out. So if you want to stitch that one, you can join us. I think we're going to have a hashtag. I can't remember what we decided it's going to be. I can't remember. It's something like 
soda sweet sal or something so you can just stitch anything that's soda stitch and has a dessert maybe it's soda i don't know <laughs> i'm really bad i'll post it in the doobly doo down below <clears throat> so i think i'm gonna stitch that on a fabric that i dyed myself you want to see them okay so this is kind of gonna tie into haul i t i dyed some fabric myself because I was bored and why not? This is just a 32 can Jobelin that I dyed. Mm, it's kind of washing out in this light. But basically it's like purplies, blues, pinks. I think it'd be really cute with the little candy shop on it. Yeah. I've also got this one that is a Lugana. This is kind of interesting. I'll show how differently Lugana's and Jobelin's dye because this is Lugana and it's much more vivid than the Jobelin. So I dyed this one too with the same colors. But I think this color palette will be cute with the candy shop. What do you think? So I dyed those two and then I dyed this piece, which is a 30, oh, I think it's a 28 count linen that I dyed. It's kind of washing out. It's got more blues in it than you're seeing. Ooh, that's good. Look how pretty. I want to start um, an another soda stitch. <laughs> I want to start another soda stitch on it. I don't actually own the pattern yet, but it's like, I don't know. I have a couple options, but a soda stitch will be stitched on it because that's why I dyed them. I wanted bright, whimsical, fun fabrics for all my, my soda stitch loves. I also dyed this fabric. It's a 32 count. It was like a lime green Zweigart. And I dyed it, I over dyed it with some like oranges and reds. It's pretty fun, I think. I don't know what I'll stitch on it, but it was fun. It's kind of like, I don't know how you'd even describe it oranges and pinks and reds and a little green and yellow it's fun and then this one didn't turn out that great it originally started out as like a it's a joblin 32 count joblin and it originally started as like a purpley color like a mauve color and i i don't know what i was going for with it <laughs> but this is how it turned out so it's kind of purpley, greenish. It's, I feel like it's more brown than it's picking up in the camera. So I was kind of going for something Halloween-ish. Maybe like a Nora Corbett witch or one of the bewitching pixies or something would look cool on there. What do you think? Kind of fun. So those were my adventures in dyeing this past month. I enjoy dyeing fabric. It's just kind of fun to experiment and if you ruin a piece it's like a well you know so haul <clears throat> let's do some more fabric um I am part of the Bestitch Me Fabric Club and I realized in my last video I forgot to show the September fabric of the month which is called Sand Dollar it's, I, I don't want to open it okay I even can. Okay. Look like that. It's very neutral, very brown. It's pretty. These are kind of folded funny. So that was September's fabric of the month. And then Oct. Yes. October's fabric of the month is, these are all 32 count linen, um, is called Whimsical. And it is a very rich, dark blue. Ooh, that's pretty. It's like bluish, purplish in the right light. Such pretty. Again, don't know what I'll stitch on these, but if you saw my collection of fabric, you'd be like, why? Why do you need more? 
I just do, I just do. So another part of haul that I purchased over the last month was some more sewing stitch patterns. And so there is an Etsy shop where you can buy most sew to stitch patterns as a PDF, but there are quite a few that she still hasn't made into PDFs. And I asked um, the designer, I don't know, I don't know her name, the sew to stitch designer. I asked her, him, them, if they will all eventually PDFs. And they said, yes, they will. It just is taking them time. So I ordered a few that I really wanted. And one of them was Teddy Bear Bakery. There's something about the Soda Stitch sweets, the desserts and things. They are my absolute favorite to stitch. This one, I have all the floss for. I just need to pick a fabric for, and I really, really, really want to stitch it. It's uh, like every time you can finish one of these little things, it feels like a mini finish or something. And they're just adorable. This one just barely became a PDF like a week ago. It's Halloween Friends. They kind of have some kooky eyes there, but look at the little socks hanging. <laughs> it's so cute. It's cute. And then the other one I got, which I'm pretty sure, I think this one just became a PDF too, but I could be wrong. It's called Dessert Village. A little cupcake house with a cookie stone, a little cat. Well, another little cat. I love it. I just love it. So those were my patterns that I bought. Sorry, my throat. Sorry. <clears throat> okay, now we'll go into my Stitch West haul. So we had an annex this year, which was really, really fun. Um, we've never had an annex before at Stitch West. This is the first year and I hope they do it every year because it was fantastic. So I meandered my way over to the end of Sea Fabrics, Leslie's table, of course. And I already showed you Freya, that's one piece I got. And this other piece I got is a 32 count linen called Angelic. It looks like this. Purpley's blues. Purple and blue are my favorite colors in case you didn't, um, no. Oops, what am I doing here? What am I doing? Get it together, okay. So it looks like that. It's so pretty. It's so fun being able to see these fabrics like in person. You know, you're always looking at a computer screen and it's hard to judge. And then this other one I got is a 32 count Joblin and it's called Ghoulish. It's really pretty. Very Halloween-esque. Something Halloween shall go on here, probably. Sunday. So yeah, those are the fabrics that I got. Um, sorry, there's gonna be rustling and crinkling because there's a lot. There's a lot in here. Um, okay, my lovely mother-in-law Lorinda bought me this pattern that I have been wanting since I saw it being released for Nashville just recently. Um, Witchet Training Academy by Kathy Barrick. Look at those witches, look at their hairs streaming behind them. One is like sweeping the moon. I don't know what's happening. The moon has a giant nose. Cat, again, cat on the moon. Oh, it calls for NPI, NPS, NPS, needlepoint silks. Is that what that means? I've never stitched in needlepoint silks, but from what I understand, they're not variegated. So I don't know that I would think they're worth the money when I have a ton of variegated thread, I could sub. Look at her little quilted skirt. Mm, love it. <clears throat> and then at Stitch West, we had Teresa Kogut as one of the featured designers, guest designers, and she designed something amazing for Stitch West, like three patterns, three. First pattern is the Sea Worthy Sampler. It's so cute. And she had like a story that goes with them. Look at all the little critters. Sorry, there's a glare. 
It's absolutely adorable. Look at those big wells. So that was the first pattern she gave. And the second pattern was under the sea. It's another mermaid with all our little sea critters. And there's another, another chart came with this. It's just a mermaid, but there's no like cover photo of it because it's just like in here too. You know, it, there's no picture of it, but it's just another mermaid that kind of looks like, like this girl. What is this, a sticker? That's cute. Look at all these little stickers and things. I haven't even opened this, you guys. And then she gave us this cute needle miner to go with it. And then she also fully kitted it. Kitted this one, I think. But I thought she said there'd be enough floss to do on um, both samplers, but I'm not sure. But fully kitted it. I don't know what this fabric is. I think it's Fox and Rabbit, because that's what it's called for. Oh, Nor'easter by LFA Linens. I'm not sure what it is, but it's bluish, but it's a 32 count. And I don't like stitching these huge samplers on 32 count. I'd rather stitch them on 40. And I have a lot of different blue toned 40 counts that I'll just swap it with when I'm ready to stitch. So another thing I bought in the annex from um, Abby, the top knot stitcher, was these cottage garden sampling samplers threads. Um, it's like this thing that like 25 designers got together and designed stitch the rainbow and they all designed a pattern using these four colors and you can go onto this like link and buy um the p the patterns to stitch all, all of them with these threads um i was given a free one with my purchase from the blue flower but like look how pretty i figured even if i don't stitch the free ones they're so pretty and universally primitive and neutral that I could use them for whatever I wanted. I also bought this little like Oort folding quilted Oort thing. It's Alice in Wonderland fabric and it'll be good to take for a treat so there's still Oorts in there. This was a gift. I think it was given from one of the Stitching with the Sisterlies ladies. I don't remember. Oh, hey, there's a card in here. Yes, Stitching with the Sisterlies. They made, she made all these needle books. 200 of them. That's some dedication. Um, and then, you know, you're just given a whole bunch of like cute little things from everybody. This was not the other gift from the other Sisterly. I'm sorry, I don't know your names. But from the other Sisterly, cute little needle miner at the old sewing machine on it. That's real thick. It's like one of those Glowforge ones. And then I was given a, a hank or a hank. A little, what do you call this? Just like floss from uh, Jan Hicks Creates. It's a sample of Pippa from Mississauga Silk. I also bought a pattern, a PDF from Jan Hicks. Um, it's called the Enchanted Garden, I think. It uses all Mississauga silk, so I asked for those for Christmas. So I can stitch that. And I don't have a picture of it. So. And then I was given this cute scissor fob from Alma, the tattooed reading owl. How cute. Love it. Um, oh, the other guest designer was Jordan. Little Stitch Girl, and this was her pattern she gave to everybody. These are like sewn needle minders, and it's cute. Oh, oh my gosh, these are all stuck together. We're also given um, some floss drop tags from Debbie, Snow Carpet Crafts, to go with our Teresa Colgates. And then from, what is her name? 
I have a card in here. Um, nope. I thought I kept it in here specifically. Yes, Stacy Stitches. She gave out a bunch of needle minders. Oh my gosh. She was sitting at my table with Ymir, almond and nymphs. And I got this kitty and this little bat. And this little taggy with her, she says it's her motto. Quit bitching, get stitching. <laughs> um, and then I was given, I lost the little, I don't, the little thing that it came on. But it's a little ghosty, devil ghosty needle minder. And then Lynn X Stitches. She has a YouTube too. Lynn X Stitches creates. She gave me a Snoopy needle minder. And then my friend Amy bought me this needle minder from Abby Top Knot Stitchers, <laughs> Kitchen Witch. I'm not a witch, I'm a wife. If you know, you know. Oh, geez. <clears throat> and then I bought, where did I buy this? I think I bought this from Leslie too. It's a little unicorn needle minder. And then some more flash drops from people. This little hedgehog needle minder from Ray Stitching Sunshine. Ray Stitching Sunshine. And this little, what is this? Lost taggy thing, Debbie from Debbie. She gave everybody one of those and I think mine had a needle minder in it too. Maybe that's where the ghost one came from. I think that's where the ghost came from. And then this little bag tag. And then the only thing I bought from the warehouse, which is um, Stitchery Express, was some browns. Because I needed a brown for my Halloween sampler. Um, and none of my browns I had a stash worked. And then I bought this bag. It's a Whip It Up project bag. I bought it from Leslie. It's Hocus Pocus. I had to, I had to have it. It's Hocus Pocus. So that is all my haul from Stitch West. Oh, and then my mother-in-law, Lorinda, made these scissor blocks. She's so crafty. I think that's, okay. So, a few of you liked my um, favorite things. Oh my gosh, we're 43 minutes in. My 40, or my favorite things little section. And I thought it was kind of fun, so I'm, I did it again. So, my favorite things that I've been enjoying this past month. Number one. My Velky Patoki. This is the mini. I kept the little thingy. You don't have to keep this on here. I ordered this. In October last year and it came two days before I left for Stitch West so a full year a full year after ordering um, it's absolutely fantastic I love it so much it holds Q snaps it holds hoops if you don't have one you need it it's so light too it fit in my stitching bag perfectly I've been loving it I love it love it love it <clears throat> another one of my favorite things is this yogurt ratio this yogurt is so good this is the last one and me and my husband fought over it and i won this is so good i they're a little expensive like a dollar fifty each but <gasps> delicious delicious if you like yogurt i don't even know if it's greek yogurt i don't know it's good though another one of my favorite things is these perfumes. So last year at Stitch West, Rika introduced me to Jo Malone perfume. Um, I'm not a real big florally perfume person. I kind of like deeper, 
mm, woodsier kind of smells. And so I never wore perfume really because I could never find one that was like, this is my smell until Jo Malone's Silver Birch and Lavender. It is so good. I wear it every single day. I love it. And while we were waiting for our table in Nordstrom at Stitch West, we went to the perfume counter, of course, and a lovely, lovely gentleman helped me pick out wood sage and sea salt. And I've been putting these two together and wearing them at the same time, and it's Nirvana, and it's so good. So if you ever see me in person, you have to tell me I smell good because, girl. And the lovely gentleman helping me also put in a couple little samples, which I immediately dropped one on the ground when I got home and it shattered in a million pieces. So I don't know the scent or the name. It smelled good. I don't know the name. But this one is Poppy and Barley, and it is also amazing. Um, I put a little sample set on my wish list for Christmas this year, so... We'll see. Um, another favorite thing is I've been not drinking soda, trying not to drink soda. So I've been drinking sparkling waters and this is Waterloo. They're my favorite ones so far. I get like big pallets of them at Costco. Mm. They're so good. I really, really love them. It makes me drink a lot of water. Delicious. If they're bad for me, don't tell me, okay? So, um, oh, my last favorite thing is actually a food item, shocker, recipe I found on TikTok. Um, it's like a rustic loaf of bread recipe. You have to have a Dutch oven pot or deep pan that has a lid. <clears throat> so the recipe is, I can type it out in the doobly do below too. The recipe is one and a half cups of water doesn't matter the temperature. Half a teaspoon of yeast mix. Three cups of flour, whatever flour you want, regular all purpose, I think. And then one and a half teaspoons of salt mix. It's wet, cover it, put it on the counter, put it in a cold oven, leave it for like 12, 16 hours. I make it the night before I go to bed, leave it in the oven. I cook it the next afternoon. So it's currently in my oven waiting to be cooked. But you pull it out of the bowl. You put your Dutch oven in the oven. You start your oven, 450. Let it heat up. Let the pot heat up in the oven. You take the dough out. You kind of shape it into just a ball. And then you get parchment paper. You pull the hot pan out when the oven's heated up. Put the parchment paper in. Plop the dough in. Do a slice or two across the top for expansion. Lid on. Bake for 30 minutes. Lid off. It's getting really windy outside. Sorry, I was distracted. Lid off, bake for 15, and you are left with a beautiful, crusty, perfect bread for soup, avocado toast, open face sandwiches, eating plain with butter, whatever you want. It's delicious. Cost me about 50 cents to make. Try it. Let me know what you think. So those are my favorite things. Favorite things. Should we draw for the winner of my giveaways? If you don't remember, I'm giving away this Souvenirs of Summer Black Blackbird Designs book for 1,000 subscribers. I'm also giving away the Pansy Needle Minder from Clay by Kim. Thanks to everybody who entered. And I don't know how to do the cool random comment generator, so I literally wrote down all the old names and numbered them. And I'm going to do the random number generator. That's not what I wanted. So we are going to go from one to, we had how many people? We'll draw for summer first. I had 23 people. Comment with summer. Generate. Number 16, you are the winner and you are Sandy Gordon, Gorton, Sandy Gorton. Yay, you're the winner of summer, souvenirs of summer. I'll put my email in the box below. Please email me your address and I will get that in the mail to you. Thanks for entering. Say it again, Sandy Gorton. I will comment on your comment, okay? 
Okay, the pansy. I had 32 people want the pansy clay by Kim. And the winner is number seven, which is Debbie, Mama Bear Stitchery. You won. Yay, Debbie. That's so fun. So, again, send me your email address. You can do it on Instagram if you want. I don't care. I'll comment on your comment. Thanks for entering, everybody. That was so much fun. Oh, I want to give things away all the time. Okay, let's see. Oh my gosh, I had Happy Mail and it's sitting right here and I forgot. I'm doing this real quick. Long video, don't care. We're doing it. The lovely Amber, Rogue Mama Stitcher, sent me like the sweetest Happy Mail package. This is so exciting. <laughs> Happy Mail. And I'm just I'm overwhelmed. It was so sweet. First of all, in the package was sewing cats. How she knew that this pattern has been on my wish list for like two years, I don't know. But she knew. And now I have to start it. She also sent me Four Seasons Dogs. I got to start this little Santa one. I also got all the thread for this too. So cute. <clears throat> and um, her little, I won't read her you her letter, but like it came on this cutest kawaii paper. I love kawaii, kawaii things. And now I'm like hunting the internet. I need papers like this. I need it copying you. She also sent me some magazines, some cross stitching magazines. I've already earmarked things that I want to stitch in this in, in all of them. Like there's so many cute things and this little cute like tag fruit kit. So cute. Another magazine. I'm, I could flip through them, I guess, but I don't, we're already at a billion minutes for this. Oh, so many cute things. And then 2021 Christmas Ornaments Magazine. There's so many cute little Christmas ones. I love that bird. The little penguin has beads. So cute. We got a little gnome dude. So cute. And she didn't stop there, Miss Amber. She sent me three pieces of hand dyed by Rolanda. Rolanda, Rolanda. I've heard it both ways. I'm not 100% sure how you say it. But she sent me this 28 count opal Lugana. Opal, look at it. It's so cute. I've never stitched on the Rolanda fabric. And now I have three to try. So pretty. And this one is a 28 count doesn't say. It feels like a Joblin or a Lugana. <gasps> Look at it. Oh, they're so pretty. This is like the softest fabric I've ever felt too, by the way. Oh. And this piece is also a Joblin 28 count. pretty. Look at the modeling. It's so fun. I want to know how she does that. How does she do this? Does she use ice? If you dye fabric, let me know. How is this achieved? Is that ice? I don't know. But that was so much fun. Thank you, Amber. Okay. <clears throat> That's all my stitching stuff. We are at 54 minutes. <laughs> Holy cow. Okay, we'll just do a little life, a little life. Um, I cut my hair and I'm still getting used to it. Hair is touching my face. I don't know how much I like it, but we're, we're trying to get used to it. We're trying to get used to it. I wanted to do like a real shaggy cut because my hair is crazy thick and now it feels so thin like a rat tail and I'm like, did I make a mistake? I don't know. So there's that. Um, shows I've been watching. Rings of Power and House of the Dragon ended and they were so good and I'm so sad. I'm in show depression now. 
does that happen to you guys? Like you watch a show and it's over and you're just depressed and you don't want to watch anything new and just mourning the loss of the show. That's what I feel. So what I do is I go back and watch the same shows I've watched about a bazillion times. So right now I'm binge watching The Vampire Diaries. Um, it's a classic trash TV type. I don't know. It's real good though. I enjoy it. Um, and I'm also watching Game of Thrones again. Don't judge me. One new show I did watch other than Rings Power and House of Dragon. It's called Aftershock. It's a docu-series on Netflix about 2015, the earthquake in Nepal on Mount Everest and in on the capital of Nepal. I can't remember what it's called, but it was really interesting, really sad, really crazy. If you like docu-series, that one is really good to watch. Um, but yeah, that's, I think that's all I can think about. We had Halloween yesterday. Parker, my five-year-old, dressed up as some kind of unicorn princess thing. Um, my son was an Among Us. It's like a game. Uh, you find the imposter or something. I don't know. He was an Among Us. And my baby was, uh, <laughs> I just put a Slytherin house scarf on her and she was a wizard. And that's it. Um, we've just been doing normal life things. Trying to get ready for the freezing cold of winter. The eight months of freezing cold of winter we have. But yeah. <clears throat> I think that's it. I've been reading, but I've been reading the same books. I know I showed you all the new books I got. I haven't read any of them. This time of year, I'm like a comfort. I want comfort books. I want comfort shows. I want things I've watched a million times. I don't want new stuff. I don't want... You know, I don't want unexpected. I want to know what's coming. So I've been watching, reading Throne of Glass again. Probably like the eighth time through. If you've never read Throne of Glass and you like fantasy, please check those books out. They're incredible. And I'm on the last book and it just shreds your soul. And yeah, I really have a bunch of books I need to read. But to last. So there we are, everybody. That's my video. Thank you for watching, liking, subscribing, shouting out, commenting. I love it. I love it so much. And I love you. Have a wonderful November. I'll see you December 1st. Toodles.